Hey now, what's happening? I'm here with one of my best friends, Captain Jeremy Harris. Jeremy, thanks for talking with us, Cap. Absolutely. And uh, he's going to tell us about his journey in tugboating, how he became captain, when he started out here, all that stuff. So let's start with when did you start? I started here at McAllister uh, in 1997. 1997. Yeah. Um, how did you get into the tugboating world? I failed at everything else in life. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know my family's involved in the industry, and uh, I was actually, I was actually like uh, living down the beach, right? And, and my cousin, because we we're, were staying at my grandma's house, and my my father and my uncle, who my father is captain, and my uncle was a dock and pilot here. He, they're like. I don't know what I can say and what I can't say, so I'll make it as PG as I can. Um, uh, they're like, you two special people are going to need to get real jobs. And at the time, I thought, we have a real job. You know what I mean? <laughs> we had gotten um, uh, relocated when we were 17, so they, they said, you know, you guys are going to figure this out on your own. And so we're down at Grandma's house, and we had to get out of there. So they came down and gave us an option. The option was come work on tugboats, which up until that point, you know, viewers beware. Like, I didn't know what my parents did. I didn't know what my father did. He said he was a garbage man. I didn't know it was on the water. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't aware that there was a tugboat involved with this. I was so and That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, all the pictures, I just thought they liked boats. Right? So, you yeah. didn't know he worked on a tug? No. You thought he like, was the garbage man? Yeah. Like... I didn't know. I mean, like, you know, they, they don't talk to us kids. At night. Like, when I was a kid, they were like, you know, you over there. <laughs> this is adult talking right here. I mean, we had two separate Thanksgiving tables. You know what I mean? Right. This is for the adults. Right. No, we had that at my house, too. Yeah. I mean, there was not. <laughs> we didn't know what was going on. We were like, all right. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. So, they said, uh, come up here. And uh, at the time, my grandfather was, was just retired. So, when I saw him, I was like, hey, you got any words of wisdom? And he's like, you know, deck for two years. Learn as much as you can. I said, learn what you Learn what not to do by guys that can't do it. Right. Because it's easier to learn when someone makes a mistake than when someone is, makes it look real easy. Right. Exactly. And, and I get that. Yeah. That's definitely um uh, the biggest difference. When something goes really smooth, you're like, man, I could do that. Right. Anybody thinks they can yeah, do it when man. it looks easy. <laughs> I kick back. You're like, I got this. And you're like, no, nah, you don't got it. it. No, you don't. And you found out really fast when you don't have it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're just like kind of fumbling for the right direction. And then, actually, you know, after I came here, I went to a lot of cool places. We did a lot of island hopping down there, traveled the whole eastern seaboard. We worked on even time back then. So, I mean, uh, I swung between two and one and four and two. Right. That's what it was when I was And this there. is when, you know, Will was back in the day. He was a South Carolina boy, obviously, as you all know. But <laughs> he didn't come up to New York until a little later in the career. Right. But, uh, yeah. And... As we progressed, you know, uh, when Will came up here, you know what I mean? I was a mate already, I think. Mm -hmm. and, On the Bruce, I believe. Yeah. And basically the way that this induction goes nowadays, it's a lot different. Now you have to be like, it just takes way longer. So basically the boss said to me, he goes, listen, I said, we got a Nova spot on the, at the time, I think it was the Iona or one of the offshore boats. He said, I don't want to hear any complaining. I don't want to hear you waking anybody up. I don't want to hear that you can't do it. I want to hear that you're getting it done, and that's it. And we're going to give you $100 more day. And I was like, $100 more day? That's all I heard. Yeah, so that sounds good to me, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. I don't know what we're talking about right now, but I can do it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was uh, it was different then. It was an adventure, put right. it that way. Right. It was, it was much more of, a, of an adventure. Today, it's, I don't know, I mean... I think that part of the good things in this industry is that they, they let you become something. Right. You know, And I mean? you kind of get to pick that path. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you could be the guy that doesn't do anything. And right. And be really good at that one thing. Right. Or you could be the guy that excels throughout all of it. Right. It depends on what you want to do. I, I agree. So, no school. You're a house piper. No yes. school. Nothing like that. Um, you've done barge movements. You've done towing pretty much anything that you can tow. And mm -hmm. now you're the captain of Grace, which is a newer tractor boat to the Brian. Not as bougie, but it's nice. I like it. I mean, it's got some more bougier. Ours is a little bigger, so a little more comfortable. But he still has, I'll show you in a minute, but his technology is better than mine. 
You know what I mean? Okay. Would you say I'll that? take it. <laughs> All right. Um, tell us a sea story. Like, what, what do you like most about this job? And tell <sighs> us a crazy one. Well, not too crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, I gotta I mean, keep it inside the parameters. Yes. I mean, most of my stories are that side of the crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, a sea story, and what else? Uh, what do you like most about this job? What I like most about this job is that it's always pushing you. Like, but that, it could be for any job. I mean, you know, I, the guys that sit back, guys or girls that sit back and rest on their laurels, are, you know, I don't necessarily appreciate those type of people in the world because, like, you should never believe that you have it. You right. should always be driving yourself to be better. Right. I don't care. I mean, I started this job a long time ago, and I still push myself every day to try to do something different. It's like playing chess out here. It really is. You are maneuvering around and, like, how can I do this faster, quicker, more efficiently? And that's where you really start getting better and fine-tuning your hand movements because I'm sure you showed your audience, you know, how all this stuff works. Right. Like you can easily do, you know what I mean? Like when you first start a twin screw boat, like run it hard over and throw it, you know what I mean? The engine that's as it. fast as it's going to go. That's as fast <laughs> as it's going to go. So, you know, it comes a long way from that. And, um, you know, that's what I liked about, and I, I towed offshore for 20 years. So, you know, that was, it was fun. Right. You know what I mean? You wake up, either lands on the right or lands on the left. Right. No, and I get that. you're heading back home or you're heading away. Right. Um, I didn't really look at it like that, but that's really how it is. Either you're coming back or you're going. You're yeah. Right. And, uh, no, that was different because there was a lot of crew changes out of town and you ah, know what I mean? crew change and man. days before. And <laughs> you're like, you get that phone call on like a Sunday and you're like, ah, oh, come on, man. Right. You know, so you had three more days off, but now you have one day. Yeah. Now you're on your last day because you got to meet the boat here. And we'd all meet in the yard, and then we'd either drive, or we'd all meet at the airport, and we'd all fly. And it was just, it just, it wasn't fun. Right, now, it's, it's not for me either. And, and not saying that it's not for everybody, because you do get to experience all different kind of places. But oh, yeah. now, Jeremy and I crew change right here on Wednesdays oh, yeah. <laughs> every two weeks. Yeah, my car is right there. <laughs> my car is right there. Uh, right. So that's... I don't know. That's what I like about the harbor. And honestly, I like the action of the harbor. Like, Me too. I like being busy and I like the ships rolling in and rolling oh, yeah. out. And I don't the know. fact that you can, you're like, it's a, it's a contact sport, but not only that, like you can, you know, even though you're seeing the same ships, you know, it, you have different pilots. So different pilots do it differently styles, and yeah. different styles and you can add your own flair and finesse to it. And you know, you can do things that look cool that aren't efficient. <laughs> <laughs> or you could do things that are efficient and you don't look that cool. You know, so it's it's a little bit different on both ends. But with barge moving, the biggest difference I saw anyway is that you only have certain times where it's fun. Right. Going from point A to point B, not fun. Not really fun. <laughs> you know, you get on watch, you put the scope out twelve miles, you know what I mean, and you go, All right, that guy's gonna be a problem in like three hours. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's the sailboater that's on autopilot, and he has, you know what I mean, this, you know what I mean? He's just coming in on you. You're right. Like, that guy's going to be a problem. That guy's going to be a problem. It is right. But going to the dock, going to different docks, kind of fun. Yeah. Pulling the barge, getting on and off the wire, to me, maybe Jeremy more fun like, than me, yeah. uh, not my favorite thing to do. Um, maybe because I wasn't that good at it, I don't know. It. It was like using a yo-yo, right? But, um, uh, you but know, like, like walking the dog for a minute, <laughs> and then another minute, and then pulling it back in. Real fast, yeah, in my opinion, yeah. I wasn't that good at it. Now, you know, I wasn't horrible, but I don't know. The stress level was way up there for me. But risk reward, right? Risk reward. So when you did a here, good job, it felt really good. <laughs> so here you have it on a daily basis, and it can be if you're not looking at it like improvement. You know, what I mean, it can get you know repetitive. Right. But if you're pushing yourself, it's never repetitive because you're always pushing yourself to do it better. Right. I agree with that. Um, uh, with the barge work, it was all depend. So the difference here is you're being told what to do. The difference there is you're mm -hmm. telling it what to do. Right. You're making all the decisions. All so the time. Even if the wind is not in a favorable position, but you only have this space to chuck the barge in. Well, guess what? You're chucking the barge there and you're going to, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're going to figure it out to use Mother Nature to your advantage. Or it's going to be to you. Or it's going to be, it's going to be not advantageous <laughs> to you. Touche. You know, and crew is a big important thing. So before when, you know, when we were like, uh, when you're looking at guys that you want on board, like you kind of want the guys that are a little rougher around the edges, but we're like, yeah, they're strong and they can get the job done. And, uh, you know, you kind of dealt with the, the other side. Right. 
You know? I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm sure they do too. Yeah, the other, the other <laughs> side. You know what I mean? Like, they may not have been great, upstanding citizens, but they're good on the boat. And right. that's what was important to me. So, and I don't know, like, uh, it's, it's really interesting because, like, the sea stories, one of the, ba- ba- the best things about working offshore was, you know, you're up and down the eastern seaboard, um, and you get to go to all these different ports, ports where people, like, want to live. Right. So when you tie up, you basically, like, when we started, two-thirds of the crew, there'd be one guy that stayed on the boat. Everybody else is off. <laughs> it's not like that anymore. It's not like that anymore. So, like, you know, <laughs> it, it, if you're thinking about this job... We don't, don't, do don't think in that aspect. That, that's not how it works. <laughs> but it used to be whenever we got somewhere, you'd always go out. So, you know, there'd be times where I was working in New York and Will was bouncing back and forth to South Carolina, and I'd be like, yeah, we're coming into Charleston. You only get phone service right off of basically Charleston. Right, when you're turning in. Yeah, so I'd call him up and he'd be like, all right, you know what I mean, what time are you going to be here? I'd be like, I will be there in like three or four hours. And he'd be like, all right, cool, I'll meet you at the dock. That was cool. Right. You that that I mean? kind of stuff is really fun. And, uh, you know, in Jeremy probably had places like that, like Jacksonville, oh, Miami, <laughs> you know what everywhere. I'm saying, Moorhead City. So that part of the offshore life, like I kind of miss that part too, yeah. honestly. And just the feeling of going home in a strange port. So you get to get off the boat, you get to stay in a city that you don't really spend that much time yeah. in, and then fly home the next day. Now, honestly, if you got a wife and kids and that kind of stuff that's waiting on you to get home, maybe not quite the best idea, but you still get to experience it all. And he, you know, you're absolutely right. Like I had friends and people. One of the hardest things I would say, maybe you would agree or not agree, is keeping those friendships at home. Right. Because... Out of sight, out of mind. It, it's like you have dual lives. Like right. You have your, your your people out here that have become over you know close to thirty years. We're family now, <laughs> family. But like in the beginning, you're trying to run both lives. Right now, with uh, social media and all these other things, like I guess it's easier. I don't have any of that stuff. Right. But uh, it is a little easier to stay connected. Yeah. FaceTime, like you yeah. know. When Jeremy started and you had to wait for the payphone, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to age him, but like for yeah. real, guys would have a handful of quarters running up to the yeah. corner right there to call. Um, his dad, um, I actually sailed with when I first started here as my captain, would handwrite uh, Jeremy's mom a letter every hitch and mail it out. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? People don't do that kind of stuff anymore. No, and I mean, I'm talking <laughs> like a line like six, seven deep of the guys that are all getting off the offshore boats and they're waiting. We used to have, not at this yard, at the old yard, we used to have a telephone like booth, legit. You know what I mean? Like, it, <laughs> right when you that, came into the yard. That was it. There was no phones on the boat. No. Maybe, maybe a satellite phone for yeah. offshore business. That Which you had to like lick work. the light pole and put your finger <laughs> in a socket to make it work. You're like, uh, if I have to stand outside in rough weather, I don't want to use the phone. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, we're heading that way. Right? We're coming. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so definitely the technology has made that aspect of the job easier. But it's good not to forget, you know, those times uh, like that. And um, what would you say? You already said your favorite part of the job. Have you already said that? What so is it? It, my favorite part of the job is actually uh, the camaraderie, right, the crew. The job, you know, right. I mean, the, the job itself. Like that word comes from us, from the maritime industry. You know, and that crew and, and crew is so important because I feel like, you know, you get what you get, but you make what you make out of that. Right. You know what I mean? So you can have guys that may not always work together, but you make their yeah. assets and pull them together. Right. You know yeah, like I mean? the captain molds everybody yeah. together and the crew honestly does that on their own. But it's Jeremy and I's lead to like, you know, find everybody's common interests and stick doing that. And that makes yeah. everybody work better. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. So, but there is, it, it's always, uh, I think my least favorite thing now is the fact that, um, uh, it's t- the ascension process is very fast and there's a lot of stuff that goes on out here. And now it's just, like, I don't know if I'd liked it because I definitely have some PTSD from it. Right. But when, you know, the, the powers that be were like, you're going to go do this and you have no idea where you're going. You have no, you've never been in that port before. Right. You're not getting a pilot. You're not getting anybody to help you. You know, it's like, <laughs> uh, it's like this dark cave. I mean, I remember the first time I was going to the Cape Fear River and I'm like, it, can it get any darker? No, no. <laughs> There's a lighthouse at the mouth for my North Carolina guys. It, and then there's woods. It's it. And I'm like, <laughs> Where is the buoys? You know, and I got a chart and I got like a flashlight. And every time you light that up, people, you know, you have to realize you can't see. You know, and I'm like, what? 
am I looking at? And, you know, it, it, stuff like that. Now, that's that's where a little bit of the PTSD part comes in. But, I mean, you get through it. Right. But now, they tell guys to do things, and they're like, eh, you know, I don't know if that's such a great idea. I'm like, I mean, half my stuff was not really a great idea. But it you, worked. It worked. <laughs> and you're doing, you're constantly doing, like, a risk assessment. So, like, as long as the cargo or the crew doesn't get hurt, and I can get it done, I'm going to get it done. Right. Like, I'm not going to not get it done because it still has to get done at some point. Because, like, we know our job is to get it done. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The most fastest, efficient, and safest way to safety possibly first. do it. Safety first. So I think that adrenaline keeps me going and keeps me in love with this oh, job, yeah. honestly. You know what yeah. I mean? Plus, it's, I mean, again, though, it's like, it's, it's who gets to have, like, this... Um, duality like we do like you're not going away for the day and coming back home right I mean, that's you're going you know, away I'm not, for I'm not getting in the car my commute is like seven steps like my door is at the bottom of the stairs <laughs> and uh you know i have all the comforts at home i have espresso machines and big tvs and playstation fives i'm not really going without right the only thing i miss though is my family right. you know what i mean like that's the hardest tough. part of the job wife and kids you know what i mean that's that's the hardest thing to be away it, from. it, it really is but uh you know, luckily, both of our wives are accustomed. This is the lifestyle that they know. So we haven't done anything else since we've known them, and this this is this is what we do. But you have to find a real good woman for that, though. You do. And um, I don't know. Well, thank. You. Can you show us the? I can. All right. What do you want so to see? So I want to see you in the chair and all your gadgets. Oh boy. So this is Jeremy's wheelhouse. A little different than mine. This is where the all less bougie comes in. All right. <laughs> It's a little tight. He's got a massive wheelhouse. I have basically a cubby hole, but it's fine. Right. I mean, hey. our, our, our seating arrangement is a little bit different. Um, uh, I'm going to come up over on your right. Bobby is, uh, he likes to be way up on the drives. I am, as everyone can tell, I'm pretty lanky. So, um, you know, <laughs> I he like to be, to be back. back you more. know what I mean? But other than that, though, this boat is no different characteristic wise. It's lighter, so it's a little bit more nimble. You know, it's got the same horsepower, same engines as the Brian, but this is a lot shallower. Right. So, I mean, we're only talking like I'm like 14 feet, 15 feet. He's like 20. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 18 okay, so, 20. he's, especially on the tip of the bow, he's faster maneuvering yeah. around. Like He's more nimble all in general. This is like the sports car version, but right. with the power to the Brian. Yes. And you see how his uh, throttles are a little different. My throttles are small and they're super like They're quick. fast. And these are just like, my hands aren't that big. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are, but you know, when you're on the brine, these, you know, the, the, the heads are like so massive and you're using your thumbs a lot or right. you're just using your hands on them. These are so tiny. They're like the size of my hand. So you can make you really fine tune in my opinion, but it did take getting used to because i was on the sister boat to the brine right the ava the ava and uh beautiful boat i mean just the layouts man you can't be you them. can't i mean crew comforts everybody was just now i will say this the deckhands room and the um uh, mates room so the mate used to be up top like when you when will's over on his boat you know you they have uh jack and jill doors and they they join so now i have jack and jill doors with the engineer, engineer and that is different um, I get that, you know, but downstairs, uh, you know, or in the four peak, I guess you would call it in a nautical term, the deckhands have a much bigger room than they did on the Ava and the Brian. And the mace room is massive, you know, they're both massive, but I feel like with two guys in the one room, it's less massive. Right. No, so you don't have that space to kind of like, you know, be, be able, I have the same room as Will does on, or we did on the Ava. Uh, when, when it comes to the technology, a lot of this stuff is all touchscreen, which, you know, that's just the newer versions of everything when new it comes radios. to radios. New radios. I don't like these up here. Oh, yeah. Like, so wheels are down in front. So that's that's different. You got to look up to see your RPMs. Yeah. And, and we do run into that same problem. Right. You get the power up to get them to spin around over five knots. Right. So. Uh, show us the winch. So his winch is just a tad bit smaller. But yeah. still as effective. And everything's on one hand. Everything's on one hand. You know, we don't have the foot pedal. Um, uh, you have your brake set. You have your freewheel, which is what I use. Uh, the Brian, you know, they could pay out on their power. So, you know, that's, you're always back in easiest turn immediately, which is awesome. Us, we have to either power out or we have to throw it into freewheel, get some distance between us. 
but that's always difficult when they got a lot of weight on the ship because basically right. it's going to leave you behind. And by the time you hook in, it's going to be like, yeah, it's gonna be like <laughs> a marlin on, you know what I mean? It's going to be hooked up and go. Oh. But yeah, it's, uh, um, we have backup tunnels, I mean, so we have an analog, we have a digital, you know, we have our, you know, and a monitor and we have definitely backups on our chartlets. So everything has got a backup. Everything's got a backup. Everything. Um, uh, overall, look how though, shiny that nose is. Oh yeah, we. So if you look at Will's, he's trying to be like us. I'm but, trying to you know, get there, but I'm not there yet. Nah, now think. they've had this thing shiny, and this boat's what? January, January. To right. Now. So brand new. Yeah, brand new. <laughs> In my defense. <laughs> yes, yes. It's harder to, you know, the biggest thing though is with the the difference. I, what do you think the biggest difference was you and I, when we were on deck, like you always had something to do. And, right. And so a captain would always say to us, I'm oh, sorry. A captain would always say to us, either you find something to do. Or I'm going to find I'm you gonna something, find you something to do. <laughs> There's always something to do on a tugboat. Always. Right. Now, with today's boats, it's a little bit different. Because I, there's really not as much to do. It's, like, it's more like house cleaning. Right. No, and I get that. But honestly house cleaning has become therapeutic for me. So I don't oh, yeah. even have the guy, me and Ian do the wheelhouse. You know what right. I mean? Just because we're given like Carlos and Jojo, like they paint. And yeah. they, but Jeremy, you can't paint this boat because this boat don't need no, no. paint. <laughs> don't need anything. Right now it doesn't need So it's, mo it's definitely more house cleaning for them. But yeah. anyway, I don't want to keep you anymore. Thank you very much for talking with us. Absolutely. Love you. Nothing but love for you. Thanks Nothing for showing for me the way. Hey, absolutely. And I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.